Hello, Oscillator Sync here. To call the Dig Attack a drum machine feels like an extreme oversimplification, almost to the point of nullifying what makes it such a wonderful instrument in my eyes. But stripping everything away, that is what it is at the core of its DNA. You put a trig on a step, and as the sequencer gets to that step, it plays a sound like almost every step-based drum machine under the sun. That being said, I've really been enjoying a technique recently that intentionally avoids the idea of playing a sound on a step, but rather manipulating an ongoing sonic event. Although there are many ways that you could make use of this idea, I potentially, rather predictably, really love it for establishing evolving ambient textures from loops. So in this video, I'll demonstrate the idea from that perspective in the hope that it'll spark some inspiration for you to draw from and run with. So for this technique, I'm gonna make use of um, some piano loops just because I'm into piano loops at the moment for some reason. So here on uh, step one, I've got a piano loop. Now at the moment, it's not looping and there's two reasons it's not looping. The first is that it's not set to loop in the source page. So we wanna make sure that um, the uh, play mode is one of the looping modes. I have to say, it's maybe a little bit cliche, but I do rather like backwards piano. So that's what I'm going to go with here. Now, at the moment, um, when we play that, um, that sound, it's beholden to the amplitude envelope, which, um, by default, if we're starting with initialized patch is going to have a release on it, which as you can hear when I let go, it's going to fade it out. Uh, to fix that, if we want um, our loop to play in depth indefinitely, all we need to do is up the decay time to infinite. And that means now when I touch this step, it's going to loop forever and ever and ever and ever, unless I uh, adjust the um, uh, decay time or double tap stop actually. Um, we don't need the um, sequence to be playing for this sound to be looping forever and ever and ever. Okay, so um, I'm kind of borrowing a vibe from the Montreal Assembly Count to Five pedal. If you're not familiar with that pedal, go and look up some demos, knobs, almost definitely has one, I don't know that for definite, but it's definitely a sort of pedal that Nob sort of done a video for. Um, go and watch their video if that's the case. Uh, and what that pedal does is it kind of takes a sound and it kind of plays it back, um, a, a delayed version of that sound at different speeds, uh, reverse, forward, and so on. I'm gonna kind of steal that vibe a little bit. So um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into the sequencer. Now, as I said at the start of the video, I don't want any of these steps to actually play this um, sample. If we put down normal steps, every time we get to one of those steps, it's going to restart the sample essentially. And we don't actually want that. We just want the sample to be playing constantly. So instead, what we can do is make use of what I think are now officially called locked trigs. Or I know them as trigless trigs. Anyway, they're, they're trigs in the sequencer which will uh, allow us to do all of the parameter locking that we like on our Electron gear, but um, without actually playing the sample. To lay down um, one of those, all you need to do is lay down a step while holding the funk button, like so. Now, when we hit that step, nothing happens. The sample isn't restarting but all of our parameter locking stuff will still work and it will apply to the sound as it's currently playing. So what we can do, for example, is we can um, come into our sample page here and we can, I'll just wait for it to go past, we can set this to go at half speed by going down to 12 here in our tune. And when it hits that step, it's going to switch to half speed. Uh, we might then want to have another trig laid down here where it goes back 
to normal speed. And you can hear that it's not restarting the sample, it's just wherever we are in the sample currently, it's going to alter the behavior. Um, perhaps we want one here that goes up a perfect fifth, so seven. And then maybe back down to an octave down. Oh, that's not a double stroke. Okay. Uh, and then maybe one towards the end here where it goes back to normal play speed. And we're starting to get this texture, which is evolving. It's evolving rather too fast for my liking. So um, what we'll do is we'll come into uh, the page menu here we'll set it to um, per track so that we can have stuff running at different speeds and different lengths and we'll drop our scale down maybe down to an eighth there and while we're here we'll just put our master length to infinite as well Now, other things we might want to do um, from this perspective is we may want to maybe put in a trig where we switch the play mode to forwards looping. Again, that should be a trig spot. Maybe back to reverse here. Again, actually remember to do trigless loops here. Maybe one going to forwards there. Back to reverse. Maybe make sure that we're always on reverse by the start here. And now we've laid down a lot of these instructions because they're not actually triggers. We can maybe make use of the global probability for this track so that these changes don't happen every time. So things don't constantly loop and loop and loop. Now, one thing that we can do here to make this a little bit more vibey, I think, is to, well, A, slam the reverb on it, always. But also, um, I've got my delay set to very, very long here. Uh, and if, so if we put in some delay, it's not gonna sound like delay so much rather than some of the other ideas still going on. So now we've got reverse and forwards at the same time. And vice versa. And things start to sound rather pleasant, I think. Now, what I think is quite fun with this particular technique is if we pan this one off to the side and on track two, I have the same sample again and we can start to apply the same things, but pan the other side. So now with our and we can start to put down our um, tricks in a similar sort of vein here we'll do similar sort of ideas some different tunings. Thank you. 
we start to build up these clusters again, we'll have this one move more slowly. Maybe change the number of steps so that things don't overlap so much. We can always bring that probability down as well. And we can start to build up these sound clusters. That I think are rather nice. We can maybe do a little bit of panning, maybe. With uh, our LFO, nice slow LFO. Do the same with the other one. Maybe filter them a little bit to make them a bit more lo-fi. forwards. And this track I've got um, some choir samples as well. sample we can have some little octave jumps in there perhaps sample in the sequencer. We can start to build up
complex. Ideas that could form the basis and bed of something else. That's uh, maybe spark some ideas for you to go and try out with your dig attack. I think I'm just uh, going to stop recording and just sit and listen to this for a little while. So, um, if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe and all that stuff and otherwise until next time take care bye bye